Tubers. We got a little something, something brand new here for y'all to check a look at. Um, it's a quite a long story, but I finally ended up with one of the watches that I have endured or endeared for such a long time. I've always wanted one of these. It's been a really long time coming and I've finally got my hands on my gritty little hands, my 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 long nail, disgusting hand infested hand on this watch. Oh, I have been waiting for this day for such a long time. And I'm not gonna keep you in the works. I'm not gonna keep you waiting here. We're gonna go right into it. Brightling. B01. Um, out of the shop, I had it sized to my wrist, so we took out three and a half link. There's no, um, <laughs> there's no quick adjust or anything of the sort here. Um, they just, they're a real pain. As a matter of fact, you get these tiny little screws that grub into here and you got seven links that go across them. And it's, I don't know if you can actually see it, but there's this tiny little screw right there that, oh, hold on a second here. Hold on a second here. Oh, oh, look, at, look at those ugly nails. You see that little screw right there? That is what holds on to that. So it won't be that easy to work with this bracelet. The B01, I did get it in the 46 millimeter option. It comes in this shipping box with, well, let's get to it. Let's get actually, let's actually get this out of here. All right, so it's a, it's a cost certified, okay? Um, there's a warranty card. Now, you know, before, back in the days, they used to give you a whole list of things um, on the manual. They used to give you a little practice slide rule and whatnot, whatnot. Now they just give you this, which I find is a bit of a shame. Um, you know, every little thing that comes with the watch, it kind of makes the watch feel a little more special. Of course, it's not that big of a deal. It's just a piece of paper. You rarely will ever practice with it. Or, you know, they used to have this little slide rule that pretends to be, and you get a little cover, that pretends to be your slide rule. And you kind of practice with it to see if you can actually get the hang of trying to do multiplications or divisions or um, speed, distance, things like that. Um, it, it's it's pretty cool. It's It's, you know, it is what it is, um, but you don't get that anymore. So it is a darn shame. However, a new little thing that you do get is another one of those things that really does it matter or is it better? Um, you get this new little thing here with, uh, it's a, um, what does that look like to y'all? A little paper origami or, and you put it together like this. And it's, um, do I like it? Um, there's your watch case. Do I like it? Um, not really. Personal preference, obviously. Is, and this is a little watch case or travel case. These are for your cards. And what you do with this is you roll it up. And that's where your watch goes. And you stuff it into here with your watch. And that is your case.
I mean, do I use my watch cases? No. Do I want a better watch case? Yeah. Um, I'd love to see a really nice either leather or wooden box for a roughly 10,000 plus dollars including tax watch. Um, can you do anything about it? <laughs> no. Is there any reason to gripe about it? No. Um, I believe this watch retails for uh, $9,600 for the bracelet version. And then it's actually another $800 for a leather band and a deployment buckle. Um, yeah, the deployment buckle is like maybe $400, $450. And then the leather band, the croc band is like another 400 Somewhere in that range is what usually manufacturers will charge for them. So about $800 for the leather. Um, I did get the leather. It's just not quite here yet because they're out of stock on the deployment buckle the correct deployment buckle, which is brushed and sections of it polished. Um, am I happy with this watch? So far, yes. Um, there's a few things you have to understand. Um, this is a 46 millimeter watch. Now this, the movement back here the caliber, it, it, this is a B01 caliber, and it's, it, it's, you see it in a Tudor. You see it in the Navitimer. Um, the thing is, it's a really nice movement. The B01 is, it has been matured, and it has been, um, there's a few things that, have, that they've, you know, they've made better over the years, but it's been around for some time now. Uh, one of the best things I like about this movement is the fact that it is a column wheel chronograph and it does offer a vertical clutch. Not a lateral clutch, but a vertical clutch, which means that, well, a column wheel chronograph is when you start the chronograph, when you stop the chronograph, and when you reset the chronograph, the button, the feel, and the hear, the and, and the and the sound, the clicking. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be the same. That's what you feel. So all the buttons feel the same. The column, the, the vertical clutch, allows the chronograph to continuously run, and whenever you start and stop and start the chronograph, the second hand doesn't jump or jitter. Is it a big deal? Not really. Um, the lateral clutch, I think, does a, a good lateral clutch movement. You still don't have the jitter or the jumps. However, this you can keep running. But the vertical clutch system, you can, you can literally just have this spin round and round and round whether you're timing something or not which which can be pretty cool you know you you, you know you will, sometimes you just want to see the second hand move although it doesn't really have anything to do with your second hand um so is, is it a cool touch it's definitely a better mechanism um is it better by a long shot not really um for example, I've got my I've got an IWC that um, the verti it's it's a it's a lateral clutch, but it's still the hands don't really jump or jitter. However, you're not supposed to really keep it running forever. I'm not going to go through like all the crazy specs of this particular movement. However, um, I am going to go over all the important ones that you're going to be want you're going to want to be aware of. Um, 
that is one of the most important parts of this particular chronograph. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in a little bit so you guys can get a better, slightly better look on the wash here. Um, it's slightly better and it's not just slightly better, it is better, There's, it's definitely better. Now, second, uh, you know, another thing that I really liked about this particular chronograph is the fact that it's a 70 hour. So because it's a 70 hour chronograph, it's actually a really good movement. Get some close-ups on that real quick. Now, this is a 56 mil watch. Does it wear like a 56 mil? Let's check it out. We've got a 17 mil, 17 centimeter weight wrist. Some things that they have done better or they have changed on this watch. You tell me, is it too big? <laughs> it actually could be on the bigger side. It is on the bigger side. I got I to gotta admit, it is on the bigger side. But I did try the 41 and I did try the 43. And I f it, it felt to me like they wore really small. They... It didn't wear as well as a 43 should have. Like, I have a 44 and a 43 in, in my wrist collection, watch collection, and they all wore kind of like this did. When you just look at it, maybe it's the white slide rule with the blue fade, blue dial. Uh, maybe that's it. Maybe the crown is a little, 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 little thinner. Maybe it's the lugs. Whatever it is, it does not wear like you would think. Like you think of 46, oh Jesus Christ, that's a huge watch. I mean, who in their right mind would wear a 46 millimeter watch? Well, I don't know, maybe it's because I'm six feet tall. Um, I'm not the thickest person in the world, as you can see, my wrist is only a 17 mil, 17 centimeter wrist, and yet I think it looks okay. It's not terribly huge. I mean, I can, I, I, I can totally pull it off, and I don't feel that it's too big at all. So I went with the 46. Um, not only that, the color choices on the 41 is I don't know, the whole mint green, uh, mint dial, and this and that, uh, the colors didn't really speak masculine enough for me, I think. Um, this is a little bit better. Um, the previous generation actually has um, polished links, all seven links are polished. Um, I'd, I prefer this more. It gives it a little more contrast. It looks like there's more going on, a slightly more going on, like, Things were a little more intended. Um, now there's a, f I'm gonna go over all the things I like and then probably go over a couple of things that I don't like about the watch. Now, they've got a new logo, the AOPA wings. Um, do I like this logo? It's pretty cool. Um, however, The Breitling wing logo was actually better, I think. Um, for, the, for number one, the, well, this is the original Breitling logo, right? With, but you have to understand, I wish I can show you here, but right across the shield, it doesn't have the letters AOPA. So that means this is not a AOPA, what do you call it? Um, um, licensed seller thing I, I don't know you guys can look it up there's a reason why they used to have this logo because it was sold through the AOPA now they're not but um, you can still get you know brightening is now it has a logo it went back to this logo which I'm okay with um, I think the wing logo is a little bit better of course the counterweight on the second hand or the, on the, or, or the or the chronograph hand is gone now which I do like better on that better that that's a little better too um, the anchor but there's an but there's something I like about the dial which is 
how they've contoured the dial. Like out here, the bezel is, the slide rule is shaped slightly different so that it, look, it, gives, it, a, it gives it a flatter look. And I love watches that seem to have or are from the dial to the back of the crystal here that look sh more shallow. I don't like watches that are really, where the crystal is heavily lifted above the dial. This here is nice and thin, which I really enjoy. Because when you look at the watch, the glass, the, the crystal seemingly kind of disappears and all you're looking at is just like a really flat surface of the dial. It doesn't feel like you're looking through something like into a cavity into the dial and the hands. This looks like it's right up against the, against the, against the crystal and I really, really dig that. As you can see around the, around the sides here where the bezel, where the uh, slide rule meets, there's absolutely, there's, there, there's like almost zero room between there and where the glass meets. And that to me is super duper sexy. You know, I just don't know how to put it. It's just one of those things I really like about the watch. So now the layout has changed slightly over the years. They've sometimes had the 12, 9, 6 o'clock. Now they've gone with the 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock position on the, on the um, sub dials. Um, one awesome, there's a few awesome things about this movement that I really like. For example, I just started the chronograph hands. So as you can see, a lot of the watches, they'll have the minute marker on the chronograph will actually move kind of like the hour marker where it slides into one, slides into two, slides mm -hmm. into three, slides into four, five, whatever. In this particular watch's case, uh, there's a couple out there, there's, a, there's several out there that does this, but I really do enjoy this more, where when that, when that second hand hits 12, look at here, immediately, bam, moves to one. And that marker is spot on one. And it doesn't move until that second hand moves back to the 12. I mean, you know, if, you, if you're looking at, like, if you're trying to be as accurate as you can with a wristwatch, <laughs> I don't know how many people are really, really, really timing this for, you know, chronometer or chron chronograph or whatever. I, it is worth, you know, but I love it. You know, it's just one of those things, you know. Um, it's a tool watch and it's, it's, those are the things I enjoy and I love seeing that. The date wheel is at the six o'clock. The date wheel is the same. It moves, it clicks over exactly at the 12 o'clock mark. And the cool thing about that is you can, re you can set the date at any time of the day. Even if your time is at 11 o'clock or 11.30, you don't have to move the time before you change the date. You can change the date whenever you want. You know what I mean? That's a huge deal. If you know anything about watches and if you've been around, you're not supposed to change your time, uh, you know, generically speaking, anywhere between 10 and two or nine to three, and the, you're not supposed to change your time because you can break off a little tab on the date wheel and da 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 da, -da and your date function won't work anymore or you'll need to get a service. Well, they've made that not a problem. So, you can change the date whenever the heck you want, which is super cool, I think. Um, the, the dial color is just extremely extraordinary. It's, it's kind of a muted blue jeans. I don't know. It's, I really like the color on this. And the loom is very small but they glow really well. I'm not gonna do a loom shot today, but um, we'll do that one, maybe one, some of the, one, on one, day, one of these days. But here, here's a, here's, here's a micro shot for you guys, and we're gonna go over it. It is coated, anti-reflective coating on both sides, on the inside, as well as the outside. It's 
slide rule bezel is white, blue somber style, white subdials, red chronograph second hand. Super aluminum filled sword hands. Everything that you'd want from a watch like this is here. The slide rule moves ever so nicely, it's so smooth. If anything, they do this so right. They have been doing this for years now. So uh, the outside bezel, you move that bezel and it turns a gear, which turns another gear, which turns the slide rule on the inside of the glass. So the glass is stationary while everything else is moving. You know, back about 20 years ago when I first saw this, I was like, oh, oh my God, how did they do that? It's just so cool. Now, and look at that. They didn't just cheese ball out, they actually went all out. They went ahead and put Breitling and engraved it on the inside of that butterfly clasp. What do I think of the butterfly clasp? I think it's, uh, I think it sucks. <laughs> you know, um, it's a butterfly clasp, what do you want me to do? Um, you know, there's no micro adjustment, there's hardly anything you can do about that. But, what, you know, what can you do? That's what, it is what it is, right? I mean, so like, you know, in all honesty, I think Breitling did change this from a foldover clasp to a butterfly clasp. Um, just because they didn't want to deal with the micro adjustment. And if you don't have a micro adjustment in this day and age, you get shunned on. And um, I think that's the case here. I think that is exactly the reason why they went with the butterfly class because they didn't want to be, you know, hounded at for not having a micro adjustment. And perhaps they'll come out with a micro adjustment in the future. I and mean, then maybe next year, maybe another year from, in, another year from now. I don't, I don't know. Will they ever? Perhaps they will, perhaps they won't, who knows? But the brushing, you know, I still haven't taken off some of the protective decals that I came with. Not all of them anyway. There's a few of them still off, like the side casing here. <sighs> Could they have, or should they have, thrown down a micro adjust, micro adjusted fold over clasp, yes, I definitely think they should have. Instead of going this route, they should have invested the time and the money to put down a micro adjust fold over clasp on here. There is no question in my mind they should have done that. Could they have, I, you know what? I don't care if it went over the $10,000 mark, they, they still should have. They still should have, you know? When we're paying over nine grand plus tax, over 10 grand on a piece, we don't care about another, well, I, actually I do, but most of them don't care about another thousand dollars, for example. Could it have been another thousand dollars to put a fold over class with micro just a new form of micro even if you have to copy somebody else's design uh, would it have been worth it yes um Brighting has micro adjust did micro adjust fold over class in their portfolio um they've already got it they have the one where there's a button inside the inside the fold over clasp and it, and, it, and, it, and it extends and you know contracts as it they have it they could have just put that design into here everybody i i would have loved it you know on a daily basis from morning to night your wrist size 
changes. It, it doesn't stay the same all day long. I mean, sometimes you get fat in a matter of hours or whatever. So, I don't know. They have one in their portfolio, but they, they did, but they didn't put it in. So I, I'm really, I'm quite disappointed about that. But this bracelet, it's a nice bracelet. Um, it's not the best, you know, um, seven lengths, um, three polished, four brushed, um, the whole diagonal pattern. Yeah, it's classic brightening, but um, do I like it? Do I think it's all that um do i think it's kick butt mm, i mean it's okay but i think it's just okay is it classic brat and avatar yes it is so the shape of the links you know i don't mind so much um i'm probably gonna just go with, i'm just gonna rock the brown leather anyway so it's all good but um, it's a thin watch, it's only 13.9 millimeters thick. For the size it is and what you get, it's actually a really thin watch. Um, it wears pretty nice. I think I, I like the way it wears. It's just one of those watches that you really have to like the busy dial and the dome sapphire crystal and the thick bracelet. I believe this is a 24 mil tapering down to 20 mil, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, there's there's a there's a heft there's a hefty. It comes with plenty of history on this watch. Um, you know, Miles Davis wore this watch. Um, there's, you know, Scott Carpenter, the astronaut, wore this watch to space in um, 1962. Um, and so many aviators adored this watch. Um, they say it's been 70 years, and I believe they say it's 1952. Um, Really, really brightening develops this um, wrist worn cross chronograph with a circular slide rule, which is what we have here. It's gone through a little bit of change over the years, but um, for the most part, it's uh, kept it's kept to its origins very nicely, and um, I really ended up with this watch because. Initially, I went with a Cartier, Santos, Santos de Cartier, the large. But oh, one morning I went to adjust the time and whoosh, the whole, the whole crown fell out. I mean, it slid right out and I was not happy. So it actually got, it actually went back. Um, 30 meters is what you get. That's it. You don't get a single meter more. I had another Breitling with a slide rule. The B2, I still have it. I went with, I went to a um, steam sauna with it. I went, we got a little, got a little bit wet and took many showers and went into the tub and da 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 da. -da and the whole thing frosted up with uh, fog, moisture. So I had to get that serviced right away. Which I did, and everything's okay. But you, you, you have to get a service if something like that happens. So in warm, steamy climates, you cannot wear this watch. Period. There's absolutely no way you're gonna wear this watch and try and make it work, or you know, keep it going. It's really because of the rotating bezel. There's nothing you can do about that. So. Um, could they have made it a 50 meter? 50 meter? Uh, they could have tried. I don't know how successful they would have been. I don't think that they would have been very successful at all. I mean, I think this is the limit of this design. Um, there's I, there's absolutely no way they can make this into a 100 meter. If they made this 100, if they made this into 100 meters, a lot more people would be buying them. That's for sure. But um, for for what it is. 
listen, if you're taking showers, if you're going swimming, grab a dive watch. I mean, this isn't a dive watch, you know? You gotta play by the rules a little bit at least. So keep that in mind. Fantastic watch, looks beautiful. It's got all the right parts. It's got all the right components to be the right watch for the chronograph sector. Um, it's got a bunch of history. It looks great. It's nice and thin. It's not super thick. It's got a domed crystal. It's flat on the bezel. There's, 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 you know, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't go down five millimeters before you hit the hands. Um, it's got a nice bracelet. It's not the most comfortable bracelet, but it does the job. Um, I, I do have a croc band on order. So once it comes in, we'll throw up another review on what it looks like. I did get the brown one. Um, we'll see how that looks like on this watch, how it feels. It is a, 40, a 24 millimeter lug, so it's got plenty of real estate there. I wish it was a little, little more tapering, um, but then it might start looking like a Rolex. <laughs> so anyways, that's my two cents. Mm. I'd like to give it like a point system, but I'm not going to do that. Um, actually, I might. Um, I might give this watch a... I'd give this watch a, like a 8.9 or something like that on a scale of 1 to 10. I don't know. Um, maybe, the, maybe the leather band will work out better. I think it's mostly because of the bracelet, but it is what it is. And um, regardless, it's a beautiful watch. I've been waiting to have an avatar for a really long time. And um, it's finally on my wrist. I'm, I'm done. I'm happy. All right. Well, that's the vid, folks. Toodaloo.